Okay, so hello everyone, Maxim here. And so I'm working for the Swedish Childhood Tumor Biobank, which is located at the Karolinska Institute. And I'm sitting half time at the National Genomic Infrastructure from uh, Sidelife Lab. And uh, today for the second uh, NFCore bite size, I'm going to talk about uh, NFCore config and how they work. So, what I like about uh, Nest, Nextflow, what I actually love about Nextflow, is its portability, shareability, and reproducibility. And as a kind of uh, challenge, I'm going to run NFCore Eager, which is a pipeline I'm not very familiar with, on some uh, on the provided test data. And I'm going to assume that I'm running it on a new machine with just Docker installed. And I'm going to specify everything on the command line without using any config file or any profile, which is not something you should actually attempt. And it's actually quite simple. If I just uh, install Nextflow with the first command line, the second command line will help me to download the data that we want. And with the third command line, I'm actually running Nextflow, uh, running the pipeline, and of course, eager with the latest release. And I'm specifying everything on the command line and which is why it works. I'm specifying here uh, the container engine I want to use, which is Docker. Uh, I'm specifying the specific container I want to use with a specific tag. I'm specifying some resources. I'm specifying also the path to the reference uh, genome file, my FASTA file, and also the path to my input, input uh, test data. But I agree it's not as good and we can improve that if we actually use config, which is the whole point of this talk. How does config work? So basically with the config, if we all follow the doc, we can put uh, all the parameters and all the properties from uh, that we need in the pipeline. We can put all that into config file and now my command line is more simple. And here in my uh, config file, it actually looks like that. So I have uh, I have made a specific config file, which I call my computer config, which here I specified uh, how Docker should work. And I specify the resources that are available on my computer. And I also uh, specify, I, I don't need to specify the actual container for, uh, for uh, NFCore eager because it's already specified in the nextflow.config file, which is already provided by the pipeline. I could also have specified the genome and the input file in the config file as well, but uh, as I'm planning to run that only once and uh, not frequently, I prefer to leave that on the side. And the whole beauty about uh, Nextflow is I can also use aliases to do the same thing. So I can still have a look at the doc to see how it works. And, but basically aliases, uh, no profile, sorry. They are like aliases for uh, configs. So here I'm using two uh, profile at once. I'm using a test TSV profile and the Docker profile. So as you guess, the Docker profile will uh, get all the information for Docker. The test TSV profile will provide information uh, from uh, for a small uh, computer and also provide information for the input file and the reference genome. Uh, as I explained, yes, it's a bit contrary to what I explained earlier, but this profile is actually used very frequently. And yes, I'm a lazy people, so that's exactly what I would have done. I don't want to type that all the time, so it's in the config file. And the whole beauty that we have with uh, Nextflow and with the profile is that if I want to run, for example, let's say I want to run the same command line, but instead of Docker, I want to use Singularity, I just need to specify uh, the profile Singularity instead of the profile Docker. And within uh, all uh, Nextcore pipeline, the profile Singularity is already defined and it's already, it explains how to use Singularity. So I just have to change uh, the profile and voila, it's working well. And this is why I like uh, Nextflow and NFCore. It's easy. But yes, this is only on my computer. Uh, usually what people want to do when they run a pipeline, they have big data and it's not working on a single computer. So I want to do that 
on my institutional uh, server cluster HPC or whatever. So we need to ask ourselves a couple of questions. Which container or virtual environment engine is available to us? What are the available resources? Uh, which scheduler are we using? Which executor? Uh, where are the reference genome files? And where are the input files? So if we have all that, then we can put everything in a, oops, sorry. We can put everything in a config file. So for example, here I'm on, uh, I'm on my institutional server, so it won't work for you. Yes, in, also it's a fictional server, so it definitely won't work for any of you. It won't even work for me, but yes, let's say that it works. So my config will uh, contain everything that I need uh, to run my project. So in the first uh, singularity scope, I, uh, I define where uh, the singularity containers will be located. I enable singularity because of course I want uh, Nextflow to run with singularity. I, I uh, specify some specific option for singularity to, to run. So that way I know that it mounts the proper uh, folder and everything. Then in the process scope, I uh, specify that I want to load the singularity module every time I run a job on the, on the specific Slurm executor. And I do need to specify some specific uh, cluster option on my cluster to say that, yes, here, uh, this is me. I'm using uh, some specific uh, as, uh, ID for uh, to run this project. And uh, yes, so it's me. Give me my data. Give me some time. And I can run it. And of course, I specify what are the, the resources that are available on my cluster. But it's just a config file. I have other people that are using also my cluster because it's an institutional cluster. So what will be good is to make a profile. So we can check also again some documentation that we have wrote on uh, GitHub. And if I follow that, I just need to copy actually, I just need like to fork the NF core config repository. I copy the config file that I already created and I put it here in this folder, uh, conf slash uh, my HPC uh, config. Then in this uh, NF core custom uh, config file, I add the specific, the specific line that uh, tells uh, Nextflow to look for uh, this specific config when I, uh, when I use this specific profile. Of course, don't forget to put the documentation and the CI test. So I started doing all that on a specific branch on, uh, on a specific fork and a specific branch on this uh, repository. And once you've done all that, you can make a pull request uh, over the NF core config repository and uh, other people from the community will look at it and will uh, make some command and of course approve it after, after some point. So here are a couple of tips. All NF core pipelines are designed for a usage on a typical uh, cluster with reasonable uh, default resource for each process. So it will actually look like that for every uh, pipeline, more or less. In the conf uh, slash base.config, uh, we will have uh, uh, we will have uh, <clears throat> Uh, the, we will have specific resources that are defined for the CPU memory and uh, time uh, properties in the process, in the scope process. And these are just the default one. They are overwritten with some specific, uh, with, some spe with some new uh, properties uh, with different label. So here I just showed for the label process law, but we have different label and we try to make it uh, as broad as possible. So it would work on typical cluster, but of course you might need to adjust that for your own cluster. And in the, uh, in the pipeline nextflow.config, then we have some specific pipeline. We are using the max resources that we have uh, available in our NF core uh, pipelines. Uh, but one important thing to notice is that the max resources is just a threshold not to go over. So it will change the limit, but it will not change the resources that, uh, that the pipeline will start with. If you want to change the base resources, you must look at the CPU, the memory, and the time properties in the process scope. 
And you can actually change that within the process scope. You can use a different select process selector, uh, specifically the with name selector or the with label uh, selector, if you want to change the properties for uh, one process or for multiple processes that share the same tag. And what you can do as well is include a config file within your profile. It could be quite useful as well. And you can also test your uh, profile online already if you made your PR and it's not already uh, merged. If here I do that, if I specify that I want the specific uh, param uh, custom config base, uh, that here I share my, uh, I specify <clears throat> the, my own uh, uh, branch on my own fork of the NF core uh, config uh, repository. And this, uh, I can already use the profile. So some quick message uh, to end this talk. So read the docs, everything is in the docs. It's quite good. Try things that and also don't, forget, don't hesitate to ask questions. If you have questions, I think that's quite important. Uh, sometimes, yes, we have a lot of dogs, but uh, sometimes it's uh, it's better to ask people. Uh, of course, stay tuned for future NFCore uh, bad size talks. Uh, more are coming. Uh, get involved. So join our community on uh, GitHub. Join our Slack. Uh, follow us on Twitter and on YouTube. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all my institute and uh, sponsors and also all the institute of the collaborator I, I'm working with. Uh, all the institutes that are collaborating with us on this NFCore uh, project. I would like to thank also all the GitHub collaborators that we have uh, on this NFCore project. And uh, here are some important links, including links to the doc, uh, to the slides here for this presentation that were on my own website. And if you have any question, now is the time. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Maxim. There were indeed some questions. Yes, of um, course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first question from Abdul Rahman is, um, so before you showed how to call the next flow, uh, the end of core eager pipeline my, with minus profile test comma singularity. And yes. Aman was asking if the order of the profiles is important there. Uh, so in this case, not, but yes, the order of the profile is important because uh, you, you can have some uh, conflict with the parameter. And if I remember well, the last, profile or the first one, one of them overrides the other. So if you have parameters that are uh, the same in, uh, that are different in different uh, profile, they will overwrite the, each other. So yes, the order is important. Yes, um, yeah, as far as I remember also, the first profile is loaded first and the second is loaded second. So it will override the, if they have things in common, it will override the yes. first one, but correct. As harshly if we are wrong. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> okay. Yes, I always, I always mistake that, so that's my my problem. Good. Then um, Paul was asking, um, don't the profiles need to be wrapped in a profile block in the config file? Uh, yes, exactly. They need to be wrapped, but yes, it's all ex explained actually in the docs. But here to show how it was working, I make. I made it uh, simpler. So that's why it's not shown here that it's all within the uh, profile uh, scope. Yeah, exactly. And they are all important as part of the next flow config mm. inside this profile sc scope. Um, so there is another question from Brian. If you specify both minus profile with whatever institutional profile you have and minus C with a custom config, does it matter whether you have one argument before the other? Will minus C? Uh, or... So if I remember well, the minus C will, will override the profile. It's like, it's like when you, there is a specific order. I think the profile come in first and can be overwritten by uh, every config file that you specify on the command line. And then everything that is in the config file that you specify in the command line can be overwritten by parameters that you specify on the command line as well. Mm -hmm. 
yes, that's also how I how I have it in mind. Okay. Oh, a clarification by Johan Nulander. According to the doc's first profile, will override the second. Okay, so okay, yeah, so we were wrong on that one. That's why we should always check the docs. Yes. <laughs> docs are very important. Yeah. Okay, and oh, there's a question also on YouTube. So our HPC work nodes do not have internet access. Could you please comment on the steps we might need to consider to pre-download requirements before submitting submitting? Okay, the so yes, so that's the case also for me. Uh, the, one of the one of the server I'm using uh, have no internet. So uh, what I do in this case is I use uh, NF Core uh, tools that we that we created to download all the Singularity image. Uh, I think we will have a release uh, pretty soon, uh, which will allow us to download uh, multiple Singularity images at once, which will be good for the DSL2 uh, uh, version of uh, all the pipeline that is coming. And then I guess for that, and I think we have more information on the docs on uh, how to run the pipeline offline. But yes, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to come on Slack or on Twitter or wherever. We can answer uh, most of your questions. Yeah, definitely join us on Slack for discussions about these topics or read the docs. And thanks for joining today. Um,